Amazon has been criticized for being behind in AI, but as DeepSeek shakes up the market, so we're now taking a second look at Amazon's strategy. Kate Rooney joins us more from the West Coast this morning. She is up early as uh, a lot of folks trying to make sense of uh, whether Amazon's approach actually uh, may be the winner here. Yeah, so Andrew, at this point, the sentiment around Amazon's AI playbook is much more positive right now. There had been this feeling on Wall Street and in Silicon Valley that when it came to the AI race, we talk so much about Amazon was caught flat footed, which really stemmed from its lack of a dominant chatbot. So Alexa, for example, has yet to catch up in generative AI. And then the choice to invest in startup Anthropic rather than developing its own frontier model. So the negativity has really shifted, at least from what I'm hearing. Amazon is getting a lot more credit for being what one investor described to me as the Switzerland of AI, especially, as you mentioned, Andrew, after DeepSeek highlighted the power of free open source models and then some of the falling costs in the industry. Consensus now is these models are becoming commoditized or really starting to look the same. So Amazon executives have been pretty diplomatic about this, saying cloud customers want choice. AWS has offered access to models from Meta, Anthropic, Cohere, and now DeepSeek, as well as its own Titan version. AWS CEO Matt Garman told me back in the fall when I asked him about the criticism of their AI strategy, he said, we are willing to be misunderstood for long periods of time. So he was quoting their founder there, Jeff Bezos. Amazon has invested about $8 billion into Anthropic, which does have a large language model as one of the leaders. The startup uses AWS as its primary cloud provider and then trains on its custom chips. And meanwhile, Amazon is still spending big to capture what Andy Jassy, the CEO, calls a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Jassy saying Thursday during the earnings call, AI is a multi-billion dollar run rate business within AWS. They're up in CapEx by roughly 26% to north of $100 billion this year, mostly for AI guys. Back to you. What is uh, your take on this push away from deep seek? Um, you know, here we are talking about deep seek, but there's, you know, folks in Washington and others who have genuine concerns, I think, I, I imagine, about whether some of this information is going back to the Chinese and whatnot. And yet, I was going to say Amazon and their AWS service is hosting DeepSeek, as is uh, Microsoft's Azure. Yeah, it's an interesting dynamic, Andrew. So I would say the separation between DeepSeek, the app, if you were to go on your phone and download DeepSeek, that's where some of the national security concerns come from, that the data that you're uploading, the queries, your location, things like that, personal data, would be sent back to China in some capacity. So that's really where the worry comes from, the model that you're able to tweak. And if you're running it and hosting it on different cloud providers, I'm told is less of a national security concern. So Amazon is among those. You mentioned Microsoft. Others seem to be warming up to it, saying, have at it, try it, tweak it, and go for it. So it's another example, I would say, of, of open source. Meta's got another one being successful and proving that it's cheaper and easier. But I would say the difference between the app and the actual model is kind of the, the nuance there. Although. The app itself, it's similar to TikTok, you know? There are folks downloading it without sort of the, the thought of, hey, my data is actually going to one of these Chinese companies. Right. So it's definitely a real risk and people should, should be aware of it, especially if they're downloading DeepSeek directly. But on the back end, there's a little more excitement about what you can tweak and, and the, the capabilities of that model, which a lot of tech people are impressed by.